instruction manual for the human beings it is the glorious quran our next speaker for the day is hasib akram of grade 8 who aspires to be a cardiovascular surgeon hasib draws his inspiration from the mercy to mankind our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an agile sportsman, Hasib loves playing basketball and soccer while also being good in boxing, karate and gymnastics. In the past eight years at IIS, he has won 18 golds, three silvers and one bronze at the annual sports meet. He loves swimming and is proud that swimming is a sport recommended by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His motto is strive for peace and truth to attain success in both the worlds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nahl Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah wal ma'ridati al hasana wa jadilhum billati hiya ahsan Invite to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them in a way that is best and most gracious. Islam came with the universal message of brotherhood. Be kind to your neighbor, respect one and all, whether or not he shares the bond of Shahada. Spread the message by being firm on the principles of the deen and steadfast in your deeds. And who could be a better guide than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whom Allah praised in the Quran in Surah Al-Qalam, chapter number sixty-four, verse number four. Wa inna kala ala khulqin azim, and thou standest on an exalted standard of character. Here we have Hasib Akram of Grade Eight briefing you on the topic, role of a Muslim in a non-Muslim society. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi ya tanhawna anil munkar. Wa tu'minuna billah. Rabbi shrah li sadri. Wa yassir li amri. Wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. The topic of my talk is the role of Muslims in non Muslim society. First, let us understand the meaning of the word Muslim. A Muslim is a person who follows Islam. Islam comes from the root word Salam, which means peace. It is also derived from the Arabic word Silm, which means to submit your will to Almighty God. In short, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God. And if any person submits his will to Almighty God and acquires peace, he's a Muslim. So in short, a 
A Muslim is a person who acquires peace by submitting his will to Almighty God. As far as the role of Muslims in a non-Muslim society is concerned, it can be divided broadly into two categories. The first is the actions and the deeds of a Muslim related to himself. And the other is the actions and the deeds related to non-Muslims. As far as the first category is concerned, that is, the actions and the deeds of a Muslim related to himself is the same. Irrespective of whether he lives in a Muslim society or non-Muslim society, the actions and the deeds are still the same. There are certain concessions given at certain situations, but it does not differ whether that Muslim is living in a Muslim society or non-Muslim society. The actions and the deeds are still the same. For example, what is fard? What is compulsory for a Muslim in a Muslim society is also fard. Is also compulsory in a non-Muslim society. For example, each and every Muslim has to believe in Allah and worship Him alone. Irrespective of whether he lives in a Muslim society or non-Muslim society, he still has to believe in Tawheed and worship one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Muslim has to pray five times a day, minimum, in a Muslim society. It is the same if that Muslim is living in a non-Muslim society. It is compulsory. It is fard. He has no excuse. A Muslim, irrespective of whether he lives in a Muslim society or a non-Muslim society, he has to pay zakat if he is entitled to give. If a person has a saving of more than the nisab level, that is 85 grams of gold, he or she should pay 2.5% of that excess wealth, of that saving every lunar year in charity. A Muslim cannot say that he is living in a non-Muslim society and the standard of living is high or the place is living is expensive. Therefore, he won't pay zakat. If a person has a saving of more than the nisab level, that is 85 grams of gold, he or she should pay zakat every year. A Muslim, irrespective of whether he lives in a Muslim society or non-Muslim society, he has to fast in the month of Ramadan. If the days are short in winter, maybe the timings will be less. But if it is summer, where the days are long, the time of fast will also be longer. Irrespective of whether summer or winter, whether short or long, fasting is compulsory. He has no excuse. Similarly, a Muslim, if he has the means, if he is an adult, he has to perform Hajj. If he has the means, if he is healthy, if he has the money, he has to perform Hajj, irrespective of whether he lives in a Muslim society or non-Muslim society. He may be living far away from Saudi Arabia or Mecca, but if he has the means to travel that distance, he has to perform Hajj at least once in his lifetime. It is the Fard. Similarly, a Muslim woman, she has to do her hijab. Irrespective of whether she lives in a Muslim society or non-Muslim society. Hey, Mumin Gon, Allah ke bhai karo. Halal haram ek matro Allah paak korte pare. Tomate jonno murito jibeer mangsho oshuar abidho karahoye chhe. Bedi tamak jordas cigarette go eglo haram khaddo. Hey, Mandar Gon. तुमरा हेदाये ते पोथे थाकले के वो पासो भ्रष्ट करते पार बेना ज्ञान एर मूल उच्च चाल हो रही तीनी नी पूर्वो पश्चिमे मालिक तीनी छाना कोनो माबुद नहीं अल्लाह हज़े आयन नाज़ल करें जन तार विपरीत है के वो जो आयन प्रणाम करे तो ताला काफ़ी हरा माल नहीं है जो दी के वो हाज करे बा मस्जिद बनाए आज रात शाले अगरोटाए आप पुनः शाम प्रचार शौकाल शाले दोषताए बांग्लादेशे बीस टीवी बांग्ला है। दीधा, दंडो, मूल्यबोध रोबाब, प्रकृत विश्वास रोबाब और सचेतन जीवन जापून। धर्मों के भूल भावे तुले धरा, धर्मियों ग्रंथेर पुरी बाढ़ तोन एवं संस्कृत करन जाता तो 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 पेते शौकाल क्� I am going to do so much work. Because this is our duty. And our duty is to do so much work. Look, so much work.
आज रात नटाय पुनः सम्प्रचार सकाल साढ़े सतटाय बांगलेशे पीस टी बांगल् The Prodigy Dai of Islam Farid Naik I challenge any human being to point out a single fundamental of Islam The illustrious son of the world famous orator of Islam Dr Zakir Naik Ek Abraham Duta Naste Bhagwan ek hi hai dursa nahi hai nahi hai nahi hai zara bhi nahi hai Motivating towards the true path No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ peace be upon him. Science without religion is lame and religion without science is blind. With his thrilling words and inspirational temperament. Demanding dowry from the would be bride is completely prohibited in Islam. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him the one endowed with knowledge and wisdom. I am proud to be a fundamentalist Muslim. Dekhu Kishor Taroka परवर्ती अनुष्ठान पीस टी बांगल् मेनी मुस्लिम हू गिव एक्सक्यूज दैट बिकॉज आई एम लिविंग इन वेस्टर्न कंट्री और आई एम लिविंग इन नॉन मुस्लिम सोसाइटी सम थिंग्स आर एक्सक्यूज बट वॉट इज फर्द रिमेन्स फर्द एंड वॉट इज हराम रिमेन्स हराम एज फार एज द अदर एस्पेक्ट कंसर्न such as the mustahab things which are encouraged and those which are considered as sunnah is the same but there may be a little bit of leniency for example covering the head for a muslim man is a sunnah of our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you feel that you are living in a non muslim society and wearing a cap might endanger your life you may avoid it because wearing a cap is not a fard in islam if you do it you get plus points If you don't do it you'll not get negative points but you might lose the plus points So living in a non-muslim society the things with the mustahab if you fear regarding certain aspects and avoid it you will not get the plus points As far as the fard and haram are concerned there is no excuse at all As far as the sunnah and the mustahab things are concerned if you avoid it due to certain reasons you will not get negative points but you might lose the positive points This was in short regarding the first category of the role of muslim in non muslim society and as far as the second category is concerned that is the role of muslim in non muslim society with respect to the relationship with the non muslim is concerned as far as the actions and the deeds non muslim is concerned it can be further divided into two sub categories the first is the general dealings with the non muslims and the second is the dawah to the non muslims And as far as the first sub category is concerned that is the general dealing with the non muslim is concerned is the same you have to be honest with the non muslims you have to be just with them you have to be kind with them you have to be merciful with them as far as the general dealing is concerned in day to day life as far as it does not concern harming your iman then how you deal with a muslim the same way you have to deal with the non muslim in general day to day dealings the amani muslims who say ah He is a non-Muslim, so if I cheat him, there is not a problem. Islam does not give you any permission to cheat anyone, whether he is a Muslim or non-Muslim. Islam does not give you any permission to deal unjustly with a Muslim or non-Muslim, and this can be derived from the two words of the glorious Quran, from Surah Muntahina, chapter number sixty, verse number eight and nine. Allah says, "لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين." ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقصدوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقصدين. Allah does not forbid you, as far as those non-Muslims are concerned, who do not fight you for your faith or drive you out of your home, from dealing with them with justice and kindness. For Allah loves those who are just and kind. So here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is very clear. Allah does not forbid us, as far as those non-Muslims are concerned, who do not fight you for your faith. or drive you out of your home from dealing with them with justice and kindness for allah loves those who are just and kind but the next verse of the glorious quran from surah muntahina chapter number 60 verse number 9 allah says inna ma yanhaakum allah anil ladina qatalukum fid din wa akhrajukum min diyarikum wa zahiru ala ikhrajikum an tawallahum 
It is only as far as those non-Muslims are concerned who fight you for your faith or drive you out of your home and those who indulge in these activities. Allah forbids you from keeping friendship with them or going to them for protection. These words of the glorious Quran are very clear that under normal circumstances we have to deal with the non-Muslim with justice and kindness unless he fights you for your faith or drives you out of your home. It is further mentioned in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 57. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tattakhudu alladheena tattakhudu deenakum huzwan wa laiba. O you who believe, do not take for friends and protectors, those who make a mockery of your religion or take it as a sport. All those non-Muslims who take your deen as a mockery, Allah forbids you from keeping friendship with them or going to them for protection. These words of the glorious Quran are very clear, but otherwise keeping normal acquaintanceship with the non-Muslim, keeping normal friendship with the non-Muslim is concerned, there is no problem. Under normal circumstances, we have to deal with the non-Muslim with justice and kindness. But I say, we go a step further so that he's impressed with the deen and you can find several examples in the life history of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Several. You can give a talk on giving examples how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam behaved to the non-Muslims. So generally, the Muslims should be just and kind. We have to be the right example so that they realize that we are the followers of the religion of peace. A Muslim is a person who acquires peace by submitting his will to Almighty God. So generally, the Muslims should be just and kind to the non-Muslims, but there's a caution to be taken. Keeping a non-Muslim as a friend, as long as you are influencing him, is not a problem. But if it is the vice versa, then there is a danger. If the non-Muslim friend is having a greater influence on you, then there is a problem. Because whenever there's a relationship between two human beings, and they keep meeting very often, it is either you are influencing him, or he is influencing you. If you are influencing him, Alhamdulillah, Thumma Alhamdulillah, continue the relationship so that he understands the deen ul haq the religion of Islam. But if he is an influence on you, then there is a problem. You may follow his path, which may be wrong. So here, a relationship in which your deen is in danger, you have to discontinue that relationship. We come to the second subcategory of the role of a Muslim in non-Muslim society, while he is dealing with the non-Muslims. And that subcategory is Dawah. What is the meaning of the Arabic word Dawah? Dawah means to call, to invite, and an invitation can only be given to an outsider. So here Dawah means to invite non-Muslims towards Islam. Dawah is a far than each and every Muslim, especially those Muslims who are living in a non-Muslim society. I start my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious Quran, from Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 110. Allah says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. O you Muslims, you are the best of people in the world for mankind. Allah is giving us an honor. He's calling us khayra ummah. You Muslims, you are the best of people. Whenever there's an honor, it is followed up by responsibility. There is no honor without responsibility. For example, in a school, a principal has more honor than a teacher. A teacher has more honor than a clerk. Simultaneously, the principal has more responsibility than a teacher. A teacher has more responsibility than a clerk. There is no honor without responsibility. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an honor. He's calling us, Khairu Ummah. You Muslims, you are the best of people in the for mankind. Don't you think we have a responsibility? The reply is given the same verse. Allah continues and says, because we enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. If we do not enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong, we aren't fit to be called as Muslims. We aren't fit to be called as Khairu Ummah. It's compulsory on every Muslim that he invites the non-Muslim to enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. It's a far than every Muslim that he conveys the message of Islam to the non-Muslims. The non-Muslim society can be further divided into two categories. The first category is those who are religious and follow the scriptures. And this is a very small portion. 
For example, the Christians who are religious and follow the scriptures, the Bible. In Indian society, where majority are Hindus, a very small portion, a very small percentage of non-Muslims really follow the scriptures. The best way to do da'wah is, as Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64. Allah says, قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? أَلَّا نَعْبُدَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That we do not worship anyone but Allah. وَلَا نُشْكَ بِهِ شَيْئًا And that we do not associate any partners with Him. We have to speak from their scriptures trying to prove about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most important aspect of da'wah is proving the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the other aspects are secondary. If you cannot prove to a non-Muslim about Tawheed, about monotheism, it is useless. You may convey to him about the other aspects of Islam, but if he still continues to do shirk, it will never be forgiven for him. Shirk is the biggest sin in Islam. It will never be forgiven unless you repent before death. The second category of the non-Muslims are those who belong to a certain religion, but very few are actually practicing it. As they are more impressed with the modern technology and science, and many of them are actually atheists, who do not believe in God. So how will you do da'wah to them? Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, is the master key for da'wah. Ta'alaw ila kalimatin sawa'im baynana wa baynakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. What is the commonality between the Muslims and the atheists? If you notice the first part of the Shahada, which is La ilah, there is no God. The atheist has already said La ilah, there is no God. Half of our job is done. We should only prove to him our the second, which is Illallah, accept Allah. Even to an atheist, we can prove about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the help of the last and final revelation, the glorious Quran. By quoting to him the verses which talk about the established scientific facts mentioned in the glorious Quran 1400 years ago before they were even discovered. By the way, we are not using science to prove about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Science is the yardstick of the atheist. Our yardstick is the glorious Quran. We are using our yardstick and comparing with his yardstick and trying to prove that our yardstick, the glorious Quran, is far more superior to his signs. So to these types of non-Muslims, you do da'wah based on the similarities. If he thinks science is ultimate, we use science and the commonalities between the Quran to get him closer to Islam. So it's compulsory on every Muslim that he conveys the message of Islam to the non-Muslims. Da'wah is a fad. But unfortunately, today, we Muslims we give excuses for not doing our job. When we ask the Muslims, why don't you do da'wah? They say, inshallah, when we acquire the knowledge, we will start doing da'wah. But that time will never come. If you wait until you become like Sheikh Ahmad Didat and then start doing da'wah, that time will never come. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume 4, hadith number 3461. Propagate from me even if it is one verse. Even if it is one verse about Islam, as far as you know it correctly, you have to do your job. We Muslims, we at least know that there is one God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least tell that. We also know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least tell that. If the non-Muslims ask you a question, how do you prove it? If you don't know, go back and do your homework. Dr. Zakir Naik has given a talk on Is the Quran God's Word? In which he proves that the glorious Quran is the last and final revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has also given a talk on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in various world religious scriptures. Go back and do your homework. In this way, inshallah, Allah will help you and you can convey the message of Islam to the non-Muslims. Allah says in Surah An-Nahl, chapter number 16, verse number 25, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasana wa jadilhum billati hiya ahsan. Invite to the way of thy Lord with wisdom 
and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in a ways that are best. We have to do dawah with hikmah, wisdom, and ma'uzat al-hasna, beautiful preaching. Allah says in the glorious Quran, in no less than three places, in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 33, Surah Fat, chapter number 48, verse number 28, Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 9, Allah says, هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُذْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ Allah is the one who sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth which will prevail over all other religions, over all other isms, over all other ways of life, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Hinduism, whether it be Buddhism, whether it be Judaism, whether it be communism, and whether it be atheism. Islam is destined to supersede all, to master them all, وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ However much the disbelievers hate it. And enough is Allah as a witness. Allah has promised that his deen will prevail over all other religions, will supersede all other ways of life. Allah does not require you or me, the rubbish that we are. Allah is sufficient to prevail over his deen. He does not require you, me or any rubbish that we are. Allah is giving us an opportunity to do a prophet's job and insha'Allah to earn a profit reward. I would like to conclude my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious Quran from Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 33. Allah says, And who is better in speech than the one who invites the way of dialogue, works righteousness, and says, I am a Muslim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan, Brother Haseeb. We pray that your words would lead to an outpour of new positive resolutions. Brilliant. Strategy sustained. The best profession is a profession of a person who invites people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Avail the opportunity with Dr. Zakir. Depending upon what is the interest, but the main aim should be to spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To implement the convincing Islamic come educational formula to excel in your career. Dekhun, career guidance. Proti Robivar Rat Shade Shaktai Apuno Shamprochar Shokal Shade Notai Bangladesh Peace TV Banglai.